elimination of suffering and the attainment of happiness are universal wishes that go beyond religions, nationalities, cultures and traditions. Everyone wants to be happy, no one wishes for misery, and everyone has equal rights to live in this world with peace and joy. Early 2007, the idea Live to Love was conceptualized by His Holiness the 12th Gyalwang Drukpa, the spiritual head of the Drukpa lineage, a spiritual tradition over 800 years old, to capture all of the charitable activities within one single motivation, to share and to reach out to the less fortunate in the world and to make the world a better place for everyone that we are connected to. The Live to Love logo clearly identifies this vision. The five hearts represent love from the five directions, coming together in unity and harmony. The orange light in the center represents the sun of hope, with its glow of sun rays gradually growing to become red, which is the color of strength and energy. This symbolizes a heart full of love that illuminates from self to others, with a thriving selfless energy to extend love in the form of humanitarian activities to those beings in our world. The external circle, which is orange in color, symbolizes the perfection of the beneficial activities that are being carried out with fearless confidence and definite success. The Live to Love initiative covers five main areas. Promoting education, providing medical facilities, offering relief and aid, preservation of cultural heritages, protecting the environment, all these have been carried out continuously in the past 800 years by the successive generations of Drukpa lineage masters who are committed to reinforce this 800-year legacy of great love more actively, especially in this troubled time when there is a marked imbalance between spirituality and materialism. Masters of the Drukpa lineage, including His Holiness the 12th Gyalwang Drukpa, have undertaken several educational projects. However, it was not until the development of the Druk White Lotus School in Ladakh that the lineage's projects received much attention in the international arena. A landmark education project was begun in 1992 which involved the construction of the award-winning Druk White Lotus School in Ladakh, within the Indian Himalayas. The school, which will eventually cater for up to 800 children in 2010, is intended to provide local children with a practical modern education, based in their unique cultural and spiritual traditions, as well as providing teacher training programs and enterprise activities. Often described as Little Tibet, Ladakh is one of the few remaining mountain societies where a traditional Himalayan Buddhist way of life is practiced. It is sparsely populated and remote, and the only road that connects it to the plains to the south is cut off for seven to eight months each year by snow. Construction of a school is based on locally available materials, which have the least impact on the environment. Natural ventilation and passive solar heating are applied in the building to minimize energy use and emissions. Water usage is also minimized through this method. The entire construction process aims to refine and adapt traditional techniques to provide modern solutions. The school is being built in phases. The nursery and infant courtyard opened in September 2001 the junior school in 2005 
and work should be completed on the senior school by 2010, funds permitting. The Druk White Lotus School has won World Architecture Awards, including Best Asian Building, Best Education Building and Best Green Building. At present, there are about 400 children studying at the Druk White Lotus School, aged between 3 and 15. Of these, about half are from very remote areas in Ladakh and are in need of financial aid to continue their studies at the school. Hospitals and clinics are mostly not available in the inaccessible mountain regions in the Himalayas. Therefore, many people in desperate situations are suffering unnecessarily due to a lack of the most basic care. In this modern age, it is difficult to believe how many women die from giving birth or how many people suffer from headaches and stomach ulcers. Take Druk Amitabha Mountain in Kathmandu, Nepal, for example. There are about 13,000 people living in its immediate surrounding and neighbouring hills. The annual income of each household is no more than 200 US dollars. And for the villagers to get to the nearest clinics or hospitals, they need to walk at least 6 to 12 hours. Many people die on their way, being carried by their relatives and friends. A three-storey hospital is now being constructed in Druk Amitabha Mountain and when it is completed in the middle of 2008, it will be able to deal with emergency cases and perform minor operations, thereby helping many of the people living in the area. The 300 nuns and monks living on Druk Amitabha Mountain will also be a spiritual support to the local community. His Holiness Gyalwang Drukpa himself is also actively funding the cost of medical operations for Himalayan children who are burnt by accidents at home. In the Himalayas, traditional cooking methods are still being employed and wood fires and the use of kerosene are very common. Children often catch fire when playing in the house and when this happens in the remoter areas of the Himalayas, the people are materially less equipped to help their children. For more than 10 years, His Holiness has quietly helped to pay for the medical expenses of these children, including plastic surgery, so that when they grow up, they're able to live a normal life. Besides constructing clinics and hospitals in remote areas, eventually His Holiness wishes to set up medical funds to help people who need more advanced medical help elsewhere. One of the most urgent and important projects under the Live to Love initiative is tree planting. While development has brought about prosperity, our living environment has suffered a great deal as a result. Increasingly, agricultural land is being turned into use for property development and industrial activities, as this translates into greater material wealth. In return, we have less green areas and less land for growing stable food, which in turn contributes to global climate change, increased soil erosion, drought and flooding. Due to the obvious importance of trees for both humans and animals, his Holiness and his humanitarian organizations have recently committed to plant more than 30,000 trees in a barren 1,000-acre area, which has been made available by the Indian government in Ladakh. This will definitely bring about more oxygen in the Indian Himalayas and more rain to ease the problem of constant drought. Of course, Ladakh is not the only place that tree planting is actively being promoted. With very limited resources, His Holiness the 12th Gyalwang Drukpa and his humanitarian organizations are trying to do this wherever their monastic institutions are located. A water project is also being undertaken urgently on Druk Amitabha mountain in Kathmandu, Nepal. Due to the drastic change in weather, there has been drought for the past four to five years. As a result, 
many people and animals have suffered. The nuns living there only do their washing on rainy days so that they do not have to use the water brought from other places and that they can keep the clean water for drinking. Under His Holiness the 12th Gyalwang Drukpa's guidance, a team of his students and friends in Europe are now working very hard to complete the installation of the first water tank for collecting rainwater as the first part of the water project. Orphanages and old people's homes have always been a major part of society, helping to take care of the needs of the less fortunate. The schools in most of the monastic institutions are free of charge and they take in most of the orphans and poor children in the local areas to keep them off the streets and to protect them from unscrupulous organizations that abduct children for child labor. These children need not grow up to be monks or nuns. Very often, because of being grounded in spiritual education, when they leave the monastic institutions, they deal with life with a greater level of optimism. The various monastic institutions of the Drukpa lineage also provide homes for the homeless and for old people. One of the major breakthroughs of the Drukpa lineage is to promote gender equality, that is to say, giving females an equal right within monastic institutions. His Holiness the 12th Gyalwang Drukpa was among the first spiritual heads to provide such opportunities to the female practitioners. His 200 nuns were the first in Tibetan Buddhist history to preside over the entire grand prayer ceremony known as the Drukchen or Great Accomplishment Practice in 2004 in Ladakh. Today, several of the senior nuns are in the traditional three-year, six-year and nine-year retreats and a few of the senior nuns are being trained directly by His Holiness to engage in the six yogas of Naropa. This breakthrough in terms of training female practitioners will eventually benefit more people as we will eventually have female teachers who are qualified to teach and thereby help many others in need. The relief activities undertaken by His Holiness the 12th Gyalwang Drukpa and his humanitarian organizations also include releasing of lives. Many animals are being denied of their rights to live happily on this earth. Human beings have been exploiting them for centuries by consuming their meat, using their skin, making them labor and doing everything except giving them the basic rights to live freely and joyfully. However, life release activities are carried out cautiously and selectively to avoid environmental issues and discomfort among the local communities. With 800 years of legacy behind the Drukpa lineage, needless to say, we have different heritages to preserve. One example from the Himalayan tradition is the famed Hemis festival in Ladakh, with its different rituals and mask dances. Another, the ancient murals on the walls of our many monastic institutions. There is also the 1,000-year-old bone ornaments of the great Indian saint Naropa. These are part of the many cultural and spiritual heritages that His Holiness and his organizations are preserving. All this serves as witness to the potential of developing peace and goodness in one's human nature. Over the last 20 years, His Holiness the 12th Gyalwang Drukpa, while leading many other masters of the lineage, works round the clock to provide material and moral support to this 800-year-old community that sprawls across a huge area of the Himalayas, benefiting so many people. It is not only through his teaching about universal love, 
but also through his various activities that touch the hearts of many, that make all those connected with him realize that everyone has the potential to make this world better.